Today let's find out if a graphics tablet with a screen is actually better to work with than a graphics tablet without a screen from a 3D artist's perspective. So this video is not meant for Illustrator or for people that are using graphics tablets for drawing. Hi everyone, Zach Reinhardt here for cgboost.com. I'm a 3D artist and ever since I got my first Wacom Bamboo graphics tablet which had no screen, I was wondering if a graphics tablet with a screen is actually better to work with, makes more fun to work with and maybe even helps to improve my 3D skills even faster. For many years I was using a small size Wacom Bamboo graphics tablet and later on I switched to a mid-size the Wacom Intos Pro M which are both great devices and I really liked working with them. I also used these graphics tablets for drawing back in the days but nowadays I use an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil for drawing which I really like. Now the company XP Pen sent me the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro graphics tablet which has a screen. They asked me to test it and maybe do a review on it. So first of all thank you to XP Pen for sending me this device to check it out. But I'm not really a review guy, I leave this to people that have experience in this like Brett Colbo. I really love his tablet reviews. Check out his review on this specific device over on his channel. Link in the info box or down below in the video description. So but summarized, the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro is a solid device. The build quality is really good. Drawing on the screen feels nice and also installing and setting up the tablet was really quick and easy without any trouble, which I know from Wacom tablets. <laughs> anyway, it has nice customizable keys, which are easy to set up. And I especially like this customizable wheel, which you can use to replace your mouse wheel when working with a pen, which can be really helpful in some circumstances. The graphics tablet comes with everything you need, like a pen, extra nibs, a smudge guard, glove thingy, all the necessary cables and a stand. So, but the stand had a little bit too low angle. It just had one angle, so you can't adjust it. So I bought another stand from the company Pablo, where you can freely adjust the angle, which I found really necessary for me. But rather than that, everything is pretty solid on this device. In general, XP Pen offers all kinds of graphics tablets, not only the ones with the screen, also the regular ones, and they are much cheaper compared, for example, to Wacom. So if you're looking for a good alternative to Wacom products, I can really recommend the products from XP Pen after testing this device here. To give this device a test run, I wanted to create a full little 3D project from scratch by only using this device and a keyboard without using the mouse to see if this is worth the money and a nice addition to the tool set of a 3D artist. So when using these kind of graphics tablets, you still have to use your keyboard because in a 3D tool, there are a lot of shortcuts. Sometimes you need to rename stuff. So the function keys on the tablet itself won't do the job here. So yeah, I created this weird looking singing creature dude by only using this graphics tablet. So a quick shout out here to my fellow YouTuber Southern Shoddy, which provided me with a little concept for this creature. He also runs a YouTube channel with some nice tutorials, mostly involving cute little characters. So if you like these kind of things, definitely check out his YouTube channel. Link down below in the video description and thanks a lot, man. So with this little project, I was able to test this graphics tablet with a screen and see if this holds to my expectations. So I worked on this project for around five hours straight without any big breaks. So I think I got a real good feel on how it is to work on this kind of tablets. So I started Blender, grabbed the concept and did some basic modeling, some sculpting, some simple vertex painting, putting together some shaders, setting up the lights, more shader works, weight painting for the fur, adding fur, more shaders, adding hair and compit, modeling the nodes, adding more shaders, taking way too much time to tweak everything, doing multiple renders since I don't turn up the render subdivisions for the subsurf modifier, doing some compositing in Blender, screwing the compositing in Blender and doing it in Photoshop instead. Again, tweaking everything for way too much time and done. Well, at least the fur looks nice. So what is the main difference when working on a graphics tablet with a screen 
compared to using one without a screen. When working on a graphics tablet with a screen, it feels really intuitive and natural because it's like working on a sheet of paper. The pen is directly connected to what you're doing on the screen. So there's just a little time you need to get used to this, especially when clicking around in menus and stuff, but all the artistic stuff like drawing and sculpting really feels natural and I think you have a good precision there. When working on a regular graphics tablet, it needs a little bit more time to get used to it because there's this disconnection between your screen and the tablet itself. It's basically similar like working with a mouse. But after you get used to it, it's also really precise and you can basically do anything what you would do with a mouse. Yeah, but it's not this intuitive like working on a screen directly. So for my specific setup here, I have two main screens, then the graphics tablet with a screen placed in front of one screen and the keyboard placed in front of the graphics tablet. So one note here, you definitely need a desk which is deep enough so you have enough space to put everything on the table. Otherwise, it won't be convenient to work with the graphics tablet and the keyboard. Also, as mentioned, I bought this additional stand which I can set up to a higher angle because if you have this very low angle and having the keyboard in front of the tablet, you would really bend above the keyboard to actually see what's going on on the screen. So this can be really inconvenient. I think if you don't have the keyboard placed in front of the tablet and can move it directly in front of you then this might work with this low angle but if you use it like I do here then a higher angle is definitely more convenient to work with. I think when you're just using it for drawing then this low angle might work pretty well. Yeah, I also tried to put the keyboard behind the tablet and see if this works, but sometimes I still need to look at the keyboard, what key I'm pressing, and I wasn't really able to reach the numpad, which I use quite a lot when working with Blender, so this wasn't a good choice for me, so I put it back in front of the tablet. So I also duplicated one of my main screens onto the tablet. So basically I see everything I do on the tablet also of one of my main screens. However, as I started to work on the project, I noticed that at some point I was just staring at my main screen and was using the display graphics tablet just like a regular tablet. I guess that's maybe because the main screen is a little bit bigger and I'm maybe used to working like this when working with a mouse or a regular graphics tablet. So in the end I just turned out my bigger screen so that I had to force myself to only look at the tablet screen. So all in all, I have to say, I was able to basically have full control over what I'm doing. I set one pen button to be middle mouse click, which helps a lot for navigating in Blender. And the other button I set to right mouse button click. And the wheel on this graphics tablet really helped me to replace mouse wheel actions, which was a really nice addition here. And if you're using two screens like I do here, you can simply set one of the customizable function keys of the tablet to basically switch your mouse cursor to the other screen. And then you just can draw on the tablet and you will move the mouse on the second screen. So even this is possible by using this kind of tablets, but this is also possible by using a regular tablet without a screen. So this all sounds pretty nice, right? But was there something I don't like while using this graphics tablet with a screen? So first of all, I always had to look down and this resulted in pain in the neck. Then, since I have my keyboard in front of the tablet, I had to hover my arm nearly the whole time in the air, which resulted in pain in the arm. Well, at least the last one I maybe can avoid by working out a bit more, but the pain in the neck can become a real problem, I think. Also, what I found really annoying is when you're working on the screen directly, your hand is basically covering a big portion of the screen. So, and I found this annoying, especially when clicking around in menus and working with notes, because sometimes stuff I wanted to connect or click on was under my hand. But I think you can avoid this by changing the hand position a bit. But yeah, this is something I have to get used to. So when you're working with a graphics tablet without a screen, you basically don't have all these issues because you can sit straight since you're looking at your regular screen, your arm is resting on the desk while working on the tablet and your hand is not really covering anything on the screen. So in general, I think it's much better to work with a regular graphics tablet for your posture. So all in all, I have to say it was a good experience to directly work on the screen and especially for creative things like texture painting and sculpting and stuff like this, I will definitely use this graphics tablet. So, but what is my general conclusion here? Is this worth spending so much money on a graphics tablet with a screen? Well, the short answer is no. 
In the end, you can do the same quality work on both kinds of tablets. And I think even working on both tablets feels good if you get used to it. I think in the end, it depends on how heavy you would use a graphics tablet and how much budget you have. So if you are a heavy user and like working on a graphics tablet all day long, one with a display might be a good choice for you. But if you're just an occasional user and use it just every now and then for some small task, then a regular tablet is more than enough. When you're just starting out and want to get your first graphics tablet, just buy a small size or mid-size one, which is way cheaper than one with a display and just test it out and see how it works and if this is something for you and how much you actually use it. Then you can upgrade later on anyway, if you feel this is necessary. If you have a graphics tablet already, I think it's not really worth upgrading to one with a screen because you can basically do everything on a regular graphics tablet, what you can do on a graphics tablet with a screen. So, but if you're a heavy user and really consider to buy a graphics tablet with a display, I would probably buy a larger one. I found this XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro a little bit too small for my taste, especially when working in Blender with all these tiny menus and stuff like this. So I would buy a larger one like the XP Pen Artist Display 22 Pro and then I would replace one of my regular screens and I would also invest in a stand or something like this which lifts the graphics tablet higher so you don't have to bend down and look down all the time so you can sit straight while working on this. So I think this will be much better for your posture because your health is important. <laughs> So in general, a graphics tablet is a nice addition to your tools as 3D artists, definitely, especially for sculpting and stuff like this. But a graphics tablet with a screen compared to one without won't change the world for you and won't make you a better artist. Better invest in some art fundamentals books from 3D Total, for example. This will definitely help you to become a better artist. So guys, this is my opinion on the whole subject. And if you have experience on using a regular graphics tablet and one with a screen, please share your opinion and experience down below in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell if you wanna get notified for future videos. And if you wanna support this YouTube channel and extend your 3D knowledge, check out our premium Blender courses at academy.cgboost.com. There you can, for example, find our Blender 2.8 Launchpad course, which will give you a kickstart into the world of 3D. And you can also sign up to our free resource section, which includes our free introduction course into Blender 2.8 and our Blender 2.8 hotkey PDF. All the links you find down below in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I will see you in one of the next videos. Goodbye.